Hey there, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the performance difference weight makes in running shoes. I'm making this video because I was asked to recommend a shoe to run a marathon in. And for me, a critical criterion in choosing a shoe is weight. And in this video, I'm gonna show why. I'm gonna look at some academic texts, then I'm going to do some track testing, comparing one of my lightest shoes with one of my heaviest. Now, as always, this video might be long. There are chapter markers down below, so you can skip on through to the bits you might be interested in. Let's get going. To keep it simple, I picked two shoes from Nike, the lightweight Nike Vaporfly 3. I've run my personal best in a marathon and the heavyweight, the Nike Infinity Run 4 GTX. Another favorite of mine, but one I mainly use for walking in. The two shoes I've chosen are both identically sized. They're UK 12. EU 47.5 and US men's 13. And the weight as tested, the Vaporfly 3 is 242 grams, 8.54 ounces. And the Invincible is 481 grams, 16.97. This shoe is double the weight of this shoe. There are lots of academic articles about the effect of weight on running shoes and running economy. I won't go through them all here. I'll put links in the description, but Simply put, for every additional 100 grams of weight in a shoe, performance decreases by 1%. Both of these are great shoes, but they're designed for different tasks. The Vaporfly 3 is a marathon running shoe. The Infinity Run 4 GTX is a comfortable cushioned shoe that's waterproof. And based on the science, this shoe being 239 grams heavier than this shoe should be 2.4% slower. Let's take it to the track and see what the testing shows. I did the testing on my local track by attaching a stride foot pod to each shoe each time. And the stride foot pod measures running power. And the idea was I put the same power into each shoe in each training block and see what different metrics change, whether the, the cadence, the stride length, what would change in each of the different shoes. I used one of Stride's Steve Palladino training plans it was a near threshold I would warm up then I would do four power blocks and one shoe in one of the power blocks one shoe in the other power blocks and see what the different change in the metrics would be I wore an Apple watch which would be linked to the stride foot pods and then it has audio on it and if there was too much power or too little power it would tell me to speed up or slow down the idea was I would keep within a certain power range that's hard to do when there's windy loops of the track so what I did first was I kind of went out and got the power range and then using my vapor flies that was running at about four minutes 45 per kilometer. The first block I ran in the Vaporfly 3s at about 4.45 per kilometer and that, I found that relatively easy and comfortable to do for the seven minutes. Then I changed into the Infinity runs and the first thing I noticed was that they're immediately heavier, the foam was stiffer and there's a harder impact on the track and it was harder, I was putting more effort in to keep the pace of four minutes 45. In the Infinities, my watch was saying to slow down or reduce power, and in the Vaporfly, it was saying to speed up or increase power. In other words, I was putting less power into the Vaporfly 3s running at the same pace. The seven minutes corresponded to between three and four laps of the track. And for the purpose of the data set here, I'm picking the middle two laps, cutting off the start and the end in each of the shoes. It's the same middle two lap section. To compare the data, which I'll stick up here and here, the power was 305 watts in the Infinity and 306 watts in the Vaporfly 3. So pretty much identical power. The cadence was different. In the Infinity it was 185 steps per minute. It was higher in the Vaporfly, 189 steps per minute. And the stride length in the Infinity was 1.09 meters and it was 1.12 meters in the Vaporfly 3. And when you multiply one by the other, I was going faster in the Vaporfly 3. We'll come back to that. The heart rate was a bit higher in the Vaporfly 3. It was 175 beats per minute versus 170 beats per minute. That's probably because it was towards the end of the session, I think probably working a little bit <laughs> on more tired. And the ground contact time, interestingly, was identical, 220 milliseconds in each of the shoes. And the vertical oscillation in the infinities was 6.08 centimeters and 6.01 centimeters in the Vaporfly 3. 
so I was running more efficiently, less bounce. And I'll put a link to the stride data into comments that you can look at to your heart's content. I took the stride data for the entire session. I kept it all as one session, but with the Garmin, I stopped and started depending on the actual individual blocks of seven minutes. And in the Infinity 4, in that seven minutes, I went 1.49 kilometers, 4.42 minutes per kilometer. And the Vaporfly 3, 1.55 kilometers was the distance I ran. Again, at the same power at four minutes, 32 per kilometer. So at the same power, I was getting about 4% more distance at the Vaporfly 3 on the heavier Nike Infinity Run 4 GTX. To go through some conclusions, I ran further and faster and felt easier doing it in the Vaporfly 3s at the same power. All other things being equal, heavier shoes or slower shoes. Foams and carbon plates do make a difference. And the foam in the Infinities is a React foam, which I really like. It's like a memory foam and I love it for walking. Since the day I bought these shoes, I walk in them every single day. I just love walking these shoes but for running the zoom x foam is lighter more bounce too much bounce when you're walking but running in combination with the carbon plate it's really good the lightness does pay off over the length of the marathon but you could make the shoe even lighter my nike streak flies are lighter but then you wouldn't get the cushioning same if you're looking at the olympics the olympic spikes there's not as much cushioning but for a marathon on a road yes you want the cushioning and the vaporfly 3 delivers. It's horses for courses, really. These are both really great shoes. They're amongst my favorite, but yeah, it's about picking the right tool for the job. And it's not just academic. Track testing proves it. Less is more. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it would be great if you'd hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff in the description below, and I'll happily answer any questions you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there, and some red videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.